Hi folks, my name is Florian from iProcess and today we are talking about a three-layer safety concept in automotive embedded software. This concept has been around for over 30 years and I personally used it in the early 2000s for our electric power steering system. For the purpose of this webcast we will keep it as simple as possible. We will look at the demonstration based on the sensor input here on the left and an actuator output here on the right and in the middle we have our controller. In a simplified way, here are the three layers of the safety concept. One, the functional layer. The functional layer takes the input that comes from the sensor, calculates the output for the actuator based on its algorithm and provides that information to the actuator driver. This layer checks for faults in the sensor input as well as for wrong behavior in the actuator driver and the actual actuator output. And it shuts down the system in case it detects a misbehavior such as a broken input line or a failure in the actuator half bridge. 2. The function supervision layer. The second layer acts as a redundant safety layer and monitors the functional layer by calculating the output as well, either in an exact fashion or in a tolerance band way to keep it simple on resources. This second layer has a direct connection to the shutoff path of the actuator and in case it detects a wrong calculation in the functional layer, it has the ability to turn the actuator off independent of layer 1. This layer is responsible for the detection of arithmetic mistakes or program throw issues in layer 1. 3. The controller supervision layer. Layer 3 does the controller monitoring and it is split into two parts. The first part of layer 3 runs on the controller that also calculates and supervises the function and the other part runs on an independent controller or core. The independent controller sends a question or challenge over to the layer 3 module on the main controller, which then takes a few calculation steps that involve the controller's memory and processor power and calculates an answer or response. This information is sent back to the supervising controller and is evaluated there. If the supervising controller detects a misalignment between the expected answer or response and the actual answer or response, it also has an independent shutoff path to the actuator and is able to turn it off. Layer 3 will detect issues with either controller stock or frozen, as well as memory, clock or task timing issues. All right. This is the three layer safety concept in a nutshell. Now let's look at how to test it. The first layer is tested with known testing techniques such as functional test, boundary and equivalence class testing and also fault injection testing for functional safety. The fault injection test either modifies something on the input of the channel or something on the actuator or its driver and tests the functional layer detects that malfunction and shuts the system down accordingly. This can be done on software level, but it also can and has to be done on a system level where physics plays into the behavior. Now in order to test layer 2, you cannot use a black box test setup like you would do for layer 1. So layer 2 will actually be tested only on high level software level, because the inputs that go into layer 1 and layer 2 on the physical level are the same. Layer 3 has to be tested at the low level software level at this point. We either have to modify the low level software to provide wrong information through the response or we have to interact with the communication between the two processors or introduce an actual memory corruption. A special case here are clock issues as well as physical communication line issues such as cold solder joints or failing conductive traces or vias on the PCB itself. Those can be tested with hardware in place. As you see, the three layer safety concept is a pretty powerful embedded software supervision mechanism and it aligns with ISO 26262 ASLD requirements for redundancy.